Yo, so today we're going to be breaking down a simple dark melody for someone like Future or Nardo Whip. Alright, so for the first sounds of the melody, it's actually two that get combined together. So the first one is a pluck called Jokes that I made myself in Serum. And then the second one is a flute from Contact. And I added this just to give the melody a little bit more texture and make it feel a bit more airy. So then here's the main MIDI for both of those sounds. And it's a super simple pattern. It's just a two bar pattern that repeats for the rest of the time with the second half of it being pushed up an octave for a little bit of variation. So if I were to go ahead and make something similar, we would start off by picking a root note. So I'm going to go with D sharp. And then we're just going to make a simple triplet repeating pattern on top of it. So that little pattern is pretty much going to be the base of the whole melody. So now we can go ahead and just copy it over for the rest of the two bars. Now to just switch this up a little bit and make it a bit more interesting, we're going to put this D sharp down an octave and move these two notes up an octave. Then for this last little section, we're going to transpose it down to A sharp and then put it up an octave. Now when we did that, this A sharp and the C sharp are in the scale, but then this normal C is out of the scale, so it won't really sound right. So to fix that, we're going to grab these two sections of notes and then put it up to A sharp. Then we're going A sharp to B, which are both in the scale. So after we made those changes, here's what it's sounds like now. So it just adds a little flourish to the end of the melody and overall makes it a little bit more interesting. Then for the last thing I did in the melody, I just added two top notes being A sharp and G, put them there and then duplicated them over again to the same spot. So that's really how I come up with these midis and overall you just really want to make them super duper simple and use the dark notes in the scale. So in D sharp minor that's using the root note F and F sharp and then A sharp and B. All those notes are next to each other in the scale and they'll give your melody a really nice dark feeling which is the sound you're going for. So if we go back and look at the original midi you can see that I did make some additional changes like lengthening those two top notes but the two other main things that I did was add root notes to just make it feel a little bit more full and then again adding another A sharp on top that will hit at the same time as a clap does. And a lot of my melodies I do like to accent where the clap hits I always find it works out really well in the end so I do it in a lot of my videos so then here's the MIDI for that contact flute but the only difference between this and the first MIDI I showed is I did control a and then shift to D to shorten all the notes to the size of a cell this gives the flute a really plucky and airy feeling which is what I was going for just to give the sound a little bit more texture so after I had those MIDIs made and the sounds picked out I went ahead and added some effects on it before I rendered it out so the first thing I started off with was shaper box with a volume filter pan and crush automation. Next, I added a portal preset called Antimatter with the mix turned down about halfway. Next is Magic Switch, which is a chorus plugin. And again, the mix is turned down about halfway. A halftime on the one bar preset with the smoothing turned all the way to the FX side. A gross beat on the tremolo preset with the mix turned down just a little bit. An EQ just to cut all the lows. And then finally, an imager to make it feel really nice and wide. So here's what it looks like all rendered out. And as you can see, I did add some automation clips. So the effects that are being automated are Valhalla Supermassive, just on the default preset. And then another half time on the one bar preset but the smoothing is just at the normal amount the other effects i added on this melody aren't really as important but i went ahead and added tape cassette 2 with the wow and flutter turned up and eq just to cut the lows again and then finally a pancake on the default preset with the mix turned down to 30 percent so like i just mentioned the super massive and the halftime are automated and i've been having a lot of fun and getting interesting effects when automating a delay so then the final automation clip is a channel pitch automation so how you get that is going here to the mode and changing it to stretch going here to the pitch range and changing that to one and then automating this pitch knob. This just allows you to have full control of your detune and it's super useful for these dark type melodies as well as more R&B type melodies. And then the final thing I did to spice this melody up a bit is go back into the sampler, change the declicking mode to smooth, and then I just went ahead and chopped this up and then dragged each of the chops back about half of a cell. This overall just gives the melody a bit of a pulsing feeling so it adds a little bit of movement and overall makes it sound a bit better. So finally, after adding all those effects, automation clips, and rendering it out, here's what it ends up sounding like. Overall, one of the biggest tips I have for loop making in general is using automation clips and velocity controls as they allow you to just completely control your effects and that is really useful for getting a unique sound. So then for the next sounds in the melody, we actually have two pianos. So the first one is from Keyscape and it's the Wing Upright Mono Dark Piano. And then the second one is again from Keyscape but it's the LA Custom C7 Wash Piano which is great for laying out bass notes as it has a lot of reverb and sounds super big. So then here's the MIDI for the Mono Dark Piano and what I did to get these chords is just copying over all of the notes that were in that first 
MIDI. So if we go back and look at this MIDI, you can see that all of these notes appear in the first MIDI that I broke down. So we have two D sharps, two G sharps, an A sharp, and an F. All of these just appeared in the first MIDI, so I just stacked them on top of each other to get a chord that sounded right and meshed with that first sound. The other two chords follow that same basic process of just grabbing notes from the first MIDI and layering them on top of each other. Next is the MIDI for the wash piano, and like I mentioned when I was doing the intro for the sound, it's great for laying down bass notes. That's exactly what I used it for. So as you can see, it just copies the bass notes of the melody being D sharp and then an A sharp. And there should be an A sharp here because that's what the main melody does. But I wanted there to be a little bit of break to give it a little bit of variation. So then for the effects on those with the mono dark, I ran it through the same preset chain that the first sound went through. So with the shaper box, the portal and everything like that. But on the wash piano, I just added tape cassette two again with the wow and the flutter turned up and EQ to cut all the lows and all the highs. And then finally an imager just to make it a bit more modern. And then the final thing I did with those pianos is rendering out the mono dark piano and doing the same D clicking mode on smooth and then dragging everything back half a cell. So finally, after we added all those effects and rendered the mono dark piano out, here's what they sound like together. So then for the next sounds in the melody, again, it's two sounds that kind of get combined together. So the first of the sounds is the string bass from the BBC Symphony Orchestra, which is by far one of the best free VSTs you can get. And then a bass called Disrespect from the Stardust Serum Bay. And overall, this just kind of creates a more unique and more orchestral sounding sub bass. So then here's the MIDI for the string bass. And as you can see, it just copies the root notes. So there's really not much explaining to do. It just copies the root notes. And then for the serum bass, I did something a little bit different where I copied the chops from the piano pattern and then also added a double chop on this A sharp piano just to make it a bit more interesting. So then I went ahead and rendered those out together, but I did add some effects before I did to kind of combine them together. So the first one I added was the Fruity Fast Distort with the mix turned pretty much all the way down. The second one is the Portal Morph Driver preset with the mix again turned pretty much all the way down. And EQ just to cut all the highs. And then finally an Imager to make it completely mono. Overall, those effects just kind of help to combine them together and make them sound more as like one instead of two separate sounds. So here's what they end up sounding like together. So overall, like I mentioned before, it just kind of makes a more unique and more orchestral sounding bass. And then for the final sounds in the melody, it's actually four sounds that are all kind of accent sounds and just play one note. So I'm not really going to break them up into their own separate segments because they are so simple. So the first one is a flute called Delay that I made myself and it's a one shot. The second one is a softy bell from Flowers Volume 1. The third one is a church bell from a Yeet drum kit. And then finally, another one shot that I made and it's a pluck called Shine. And overall, I ran this pluck through my guitar pedal so it has a super interesting sparkle to it. And then here's the MIDI for the Delay flute. And it's a super simple MIDI and it just copies the root note of the melody being D sharp and just hits on the one and the five like an open hat would. For the second one being the softy bell, it's another simple pattern, but for this one, I just copied the top note of the melody being A sharp and then copied the triplet roll that was at F and F sharp. And these are slide notes and how you get these is by double clicking on a note and then clicking this triangle right here. Alternatively, you can also press S and just trigger it to be a slide note. And then like the original MIDI, this pattern gets copied over, but this half is up an octave just to match the tone of the second half of the original original pattern. Next for the Yeet Bell, it just copies the root notes again being D sharp and then A sharp. And this is just a super simple pattern. Really all of these are, so there's really not much explaining to do. Finally for the Shine Pluck, I have it playing a super simple pattern where it just hits in a pop type clap pattern, all, all the notes at A sharp. This just makes sure that when I have all of the other sounds out of the melody, this sound kind of keeps the rhythm and keeps it a little bit interesting. And then for the effects on those, all of them are dry except the Softy Bell. So on the Softy Bell, we have a portal preset called Flutter Clouds with the mix turned down to 50%. Then we have Valhalla Supermassive, again on the default preset with the mix turned down just a tiny bit. Little Alter Boy with the Formant turned down one and the mix turned down a little bit. Roast Beat on the Tremelo preset with the mix turned to about 75%. And EQ just to cut out most of the highs because there was an annoying ringing sound. And then finally, a Pancake on the normal preset with the mix turned down to 60%. So then finally, once you combine those four sounds together, you get a pretty nice sounding accent pattern. So here's what it sounds like. Right now it sounds super messy, but when you do put the bass melody back under it, it does sound a lot better. So then finally we have two texture loops that'll be in my upcoming one shot kit. So the first one is texture seven and it's basically a super processed vinyl texture. And then the second one that is drum and texture 25 is actually a bunch of Minecraft skeleton noises that are quantized and again, have a lot of effects on them.
Overall, another way you can really improve your melodies a lot is by making your own texture loops that fit that specific melody. So the texture and the melody just fit a lot better together. And that's something I've really learned over the past month or two. So then in the end, I ended up pitching it up to, so now we're in F minor. And here's what it sounds like when you mesh all the sounds together. All right, so that's going to be pretty much it for the video. Overall, I like the way the melody turned out. And unfortunately, no drums from scratch today because I already did them and I accidentally deleted the full recording. So this is like my third time recording this video. And I like the way the drums turned out, so I don't want to redo them because I already have the type beat video made and everything. But anyways, thank you guys for watching. Have a splendid rest of your evening. And uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. I'm going to stream tonight, though. If you guys have not been paying attention, I've been streaming on Saturdays at 8 p.m. EST. But yeah, hop into the stream. It's fun. We look at people's beats. That's pretty much it. Bye. Pineapple!